This is another ESPN fight for the Kronks Dwayne Thomas. Uh, here he takes on Mark McPherson. Uh, McPherson was a junior middleweight out of New York who came from a family of very accomplished athletes. Uh, his brother Miles was a defensive back for the San Diego Chargers back in the Don Coriel days, while younger brother Don was a star quarterback for the Syracuse Orangemen who finished second in the 1987 Heisman Trophy voting. Uh, Mark himself initially chooses music, uh, accelerating through high school in three years to study piano and drums, but he ultimately falls in love with boxing and chooses the sweet science over music and football. Uh, McPherson is trained by Jimmy Glenn and has been a pro for close to five years going into this bout. Problem is that he's had some stretches of inactivity, and the biggest name on his resume to date is a decision win over Jeff McCracken whose uh, sole claim to fame was uh, lasting eight rounds with uh, Thomas Hearns. Uh, despite his thin resume, McPherson has talent. Uh, he's smart, speedy, and he has this signature spin move whenever Thomas gets in close. So these two make for a good clash of styles and are evenly matched. Back on April the 6th indeed as we go for round one of the 12 round championship fight in the USBA junior middleweight division. Thomas in the goal from the crock, Jim, the champion, McPherson in the black, the challenger. Dwayne Thomas, remember, he's got that height and reach disadvantage against McPherson, but he told us he wants to jab his way in and try and neutralize McPherson's jab, and uh, then once he gets inside, he feels he's got to really unload. That was one of the things we tried to get both the fighters to expand upon just a little bit more on how you overcome those good left jabs that both of these fighters possess. Neither really had an answer. McPherson said he may have some Warfare force here at the start of the fight. We're still waiting for that now. Slow, frankly. Particularly when you judge it against the last one between Anthony and Mendez, it was a non-stop affair. Keep in mind, this is set for 12. There is a lot of time. Yeah. McPherson only has six knockouts to his credit, does have some good power. Thomas with 16 knockouts in his first 25 pro fights. Yeah, there's no, in this case, those numbers are not too deceiving because I think Thomas definitely has the edge and power in this fight. McPherson fighting out of New York, Lakeview to be exact. Thomas fighting out of the Cronk Gym in Detroit. Said he likes being around all those champions. He said it rubs off on him. Puts a little pressure on himself to do better as he too hopes to scale that tall wall of the top someday. Thomas isn't doing his jabbing his way in as he said he would. Right, he tried to hook his way in and that was not the way to get there. He's working the body though, an important thing I think for him to do. And he's not getting hit with, with the shots by McPherson to the head as he works the body. By the way, Thomas won the USBA junior middleweight title back in 1983, May 26 to be exact, knocking out Nino Gonzalez here in Atlantic City to win the title. Only defense was over Don King, that coming November 19th of last year in Vegas, knocked him out in the 10th. That was on our Saturday night at the fight series, and it was a really a good one. Thomas is almost a chronicle of a guy that has been in trouble most of his youth and finally came to a crossroads in his life and said this is not any fun anymore I got to go to work right, hold it, hold and went into the gym he spent a year in a juvenile detention center even overcame being shot in the mouth by an uh, unfriendly person to say the least in his hometown of Detroit and has overcome that to become an outstanding fighter out of that Kronk gym he's a very genial man he really is a very genial young man you would not really think he'd be a brawler very intent as you see him fight against Mark McPherson here at the end of round two Number three, McPherson again, you see countering fairly well, even though Thomas still trying to get inside, and that was his game plan. Get underneath the taller, reaching arm of old McPherson. Good left hand by Mark McPherson. Wonder if that had any impact on hurt Thomas. Thomas covering up, tries to hook out of it. Took a pretty good shot. They are exchanging. And you know, Thomas made a very good point. He said, you know, even if a guy isn't a devastating puncher, when you're walking in, as he knew he would have to be in this fight, he said, you can get hurt by a, a punch. And I think he might have been in this round. Thomas came in with an uppercut that caught McPherson, and he countered with two good shots, including a right hand to the face. Thomas, by the way, will watch closely. He has a lot of scar tissue over the right eye. If McPherson can get some shots in on that right eye, excuse me, the left eye, before this night is over, he could have some trouble there. There's some terrible scar tissue there. 
McPherson. Again, a very, very good third round here against Thomas. Good left hook on the inside by Thomas and the uppercut. Now, McPherson doesn't want to languish in there. He would like to throw his shots and then get out. And delights in training his son, even though he didn't want his son to be a boxer when he first started. Actually trained after three years in high school when he got out early in the piano and the drum. Oh, oh good right, right hand. hand by McPherson. Wow. Thomas in some trouble in the rope as McPherson tries to come in for the kill. Thomas covering up well. And only a little left in this round, and that's good for Dwayne Thomas. Well, a finger roll scale down the piano board there, and a big bass drum landed on Dwayne Thomas's face that time as Mark McPherson backs him into the ropes, and what a round for Mark McPherson with the right hand that almost put Thomas down. Wow, what a round as the two fighters go to their corner. Let's oh, look in quickly on Dwayne Thomas, Dwayne Thomas, the champion. Tell me, let's relax. The guy's got good reflexes. You're not doing anything wrong. He's got good reflexes. You're going to have to just catch him with power. You're going to have to overpower him. Good reflexes. You keep the pressure on him and try to wear him down, okay? You have to keep him tight and keep the defense up good. And any time you miss a shot, be a little. Because he's not so much a hard puncher, but he's catching with a little shot that you didn't see. You know what I'm saying? You're going to stay extra alert. Okay, get your wrist and get up and start moving around. Take your legs around. On the side of the aisle, bro. Okay, let's get up and move around. Right. We will take a look at the right hand that hurt Dwayne Thomas, and uh, Emmanuel Stewart described it as a punch he didn't see, and he didn't. Buckle, boy, there's conditioning, though. Dwayne Thomas in good condition. He was able to stay up after this short right hand. That punch didn't travel very far, but it's an example that if you get leverage, uh, anybody uh, can, can punch well. Back to live action as we start here in round number four, the schedule 12 rounder, and now Thomas and his... Always familiar stalking boys trying to come in on McPherson who stung him with that right hand. You know, it's interesting. McPherson hurts Thomas with only 13 seconds left in the last round and yet can, still comes out boxing as he respects the power of Dwayne Thomas. From Dwayne Thomas. He has not jabbed his way in as he would like to. Yeah, Thomas gets hit with the right and shakes his head and says, uh uh, that one didn't hurt. No jabs from Dwayne Thomas, not moving in with that jab, as he promised he would. There he's working on the inside. He hooked his way in there, though, no jab to get there. He did land one good shot, and McPherson quickly hustles out. Mike McPherson with a good hand combination inside on Dwayne Thomas. Brother Miles McPherson playing for the San Diego Chargers as a defensive back. Brother Don, a quarterback at Syracuse. Athletic family, and uh, you know they're watching in tonight. Their brother fight for the title. Good left hook by Thomas, but pretty good countering shots by Mark McPherson. You know, this is a side of Dwayne Thomas that he occasionally shows. He is very wild in this fight. We have seen him in some other fights, part of the King fight, be much more controlled, but then he'll have lapses where he gets really wild. Totally uncharacteristic of clock fighters who are normally really very classy stand-up boxers. Slipped a couple of punches there, does Thomas. McPherson. He's landing more and more of those shots and now starting to back Thomas up even more. McPherson rather content just to tie up and kind of brawl a little bit here in round number six. Good right by Thomas. Brawls and brawls with McPherson. This is more of what they want him to do. Thomas getting the better of that exchange with the right hand to the rib cage of McPherson. And Mark is handling himself fairly well on the inside, not throwing that many meaningful punches, but not getting pushed around as much by Thomas as some people thought he might on the inside. McPherson's a good, well-conditioned athlete. Good work by uh, Thomas with uppercuts. Thomas just teeing off on McPherson, who's taking a lot of punches here. There's the uppercut, a wow. big right hand by Thomas. McPherson just trying to stare him off, but he took some big shots inside as Thomas teeing off with the right hand. McPherson looks almost defenseless. Hey, there may be a message here, though. I don't know if Mark McPherson was really hurt that badly. Now a good right hand by Thomas. Wow. I'm telling you what, he took some man-sized punches sure there did. from Dwayne Thomas. He's still standing, but I'm not sure how long as we go in this corner quickly. Damn it, what are you trying to prove? Don't prove nothing. 
you done do much since you? Don't let this guy hit you. Get your hands up, baby. Come on. Open your mouth. Yeah, you the crazy. boss, Mark. You'll be the boss. So God damn it, where you gonna give him the fight? Damn. What's the matter with you? You understand? It's too hard for this now. Let's get out of here. I got it, Jim. You hear me? Yeah. I hands up and I want you to punch. Yeah. Punch. One, two. Move. You understand? Here's where Dwayne Thomas got McPherson in some trouble. Good uppercut, and then he follows with the left hook and keeps those uppercuts coming. And then there will be an overhand right that you'll see. Mark just stood there, took that punch, and as if to say, hey, I can take that. But you heard Jimmy Glenn. He doesn't want him taking those punches. Wow, boy, was that great to stay in between those two rounds and get that comment coming out of McPherson's corner. As now we have a glove problem here for McPherson. That one stunned McPherson. I think that one really got to him a little bit. But he comes back. Well, he has bounced back very well. Has not made that much noise in the round, but nonetheless survived. Quite a plummeting there at the end of the last round and fights on very well here. Now on the inside right there, Mark McPherson is working a lot better than Thomas. One thing Dwayne has done in this round is stop working on the inside. Locally on the rules here in New Jersey. So we could have a standing eight count in this title fight not normally used by the USBA. Thomas still stalking McPherson, trying to use that left jab to keep him away. All right, break. Break. Halfway through the eight. McPherson is not scoring with that many punches, but at least he's throwing some here in the round. seconds to go in round number eight. All right, break! Tony Perez, who has not been that busy tonight in this fight, gets one of his few breaks here in round number eight. So it is Mark McPherson who seems to be rebounding well against Dwayne Thomas as we end round eight. Thomas unable to put a lot of pressure on him. And uh, now Mark McPherson fighting his kind of fight. Almost hard to believe after what happened at the end of round number six. Yeah. When McPherson almost looked to the point of being totally defenseless, but maybe it was kind of a little dupe in move. It would be another one of those he'd like to have a shot at. But again, his big problems in the ring and six foot one Mark McPherson. And even on the inside here, Dwayne not as effective as he'd like to be. McPherson's hand speed giving him lots of problems. And Emmanuel Stewart hit it early. He said, you know, you're fighting a guy with really good reflexes. So you've got to be very alert. And there's the jab of McPherson getting he in. He's used that word quite often, as a matter of fact, when we've eavesdropped in. Yeah. They're very impressed with McPherson. And now the jab of Mark McPherson is getting there to the head of Dwayne Thomas. This fight has changed a bit in momentum. Oh, 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 that time that shot got in there by Dwayne Thomas. McPherson kind of shakes it off at the end of the round, but that shot hurt him. He backed up a little bit as he goes back into his corner here. Give me, give me that medal I gave you. Come on, got to keep your hands up, son. Yeah. Hear me? Hands down. Close your mouth. Close your nose out your mouth. Come on, in your nose, out your mouth. You see a little swelling on the left side of the face of Mark here, McPherson here. Now you got to give me the, the jab. Uh, the jab got to work. Uh, Keep it in your face. Out, Let's watch that you last understand? punch that really was a shot from Thomas. In a round dominated by McPherson, this is what gives this fight intrigue still. <laughs> That's Dwayne Thomas. Lots of power. He did knock fight. McPherson Not off that one. Let's go. Emmanuel man. Stewart talking to his man, Dwayne Thomas, who's the champion. It's that simple. Whatever you want to throw, throw it, but you're not going to win a damn fight. They're saying you're waiting. 
Let the shots go. I think that's rather self-explanatory from Emmanuel Stewart out of the corner as he comes out on a left jab and comes right back with a right hand. Ooh, McPherson's in a little trouble once again. Thomas has got McPherson in trouble in the corner. Lots of punches. McPherson trying to cover up, but he is staged. Thomas putting a lot of punches together. Another good left hand. A right hand. Tony Perez watching closely here. Oh. And McPherson is wrestled Two. down. But Thomas Three. goes to the corner. Is We've got a down. Is it a knockdown or a standing leg? Well, it's got to be a knockdown because he went down. Okay. So the knockdown here in the ninth. Oh. Excuse me, the tenth. And Thomas goes right back to work. Boy, Thomas came out with a left jab, and that kind of set up the fireworks. And this is what you've seen throughout the entire round against McPherson here. Mark in that corner, and Tony Perez looking very carefully at McPherson as he staggers around the ring. And he may think about stopping this. It's a standing eight count. It is a standing eight count. Last one a knockdown. This one a standing eight count. Six, seven, eight. McPherson. Being looked at by Perez, and here comes Thomas out again. McPherson right above us. Eyes a little classy right now as he looked down into us. Got caught with a right hand. Another right hand. Jimmy Glenn is on the ring apron. I think he wants to throw the towel in. He wants he wants his fight to be over with. Halfway through this. Wow. The 10th, Jimmy well, Mark Glenn. McPherson is complaining bitterly, but it is his own man, Jimmy Glenn, who caused this fight to be stopped. He was standing on the ring apron which invites and, and absolutely mandates that there is a disqualification. Mark McPherson almost in tears. He didn't want this fight stopped. McPherson takes a year off after this loss, so returning to the ring for four more fights. Uh, he's later stopped by future middleweight champion Frank Tate in six rounds in May of 1987. But like his fight with Thomas, uh, McPherson was competitive and uh, was out hustling Tate in the early going. Uh, McPherson calls it quits after that loss. Uh, it looks like he went into the ministry for a time, uh, according to Box Rec, he currently owns a gym in Westchester, New York. Uh, meanwhile, you can check out other videos on Dwayne Thomas in the links below if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one.